In this lecture, I'd like to talk about resonance. Now, before we get into resonance, let's recall what Lewis dot structure is. A Lewis structure is simply an electronic configuration of our atoms, our molecules, and compounds. So let's begin by using formaldehyde. So we're going to have this compound that's composed of one carbon, one oxygen, and two H atoms. Now we're going to draw the Lewis dot structure for our formaldehyde. So our first step is to count the number of valence electrons. Valence electrons, once again, are those electrons that come from the outermost shells of our atoms. So oxygen has six valence electrons, carbon has four valence electrons, and H has one each. We have two H's, so two valence electrons come from our two H's. So we have a total of 12 valence electrons. So let's begin drawing our loose dot structure. So we have carbon, two H's, and one O. So let's begin by first drawing our sigma or covalent bonds. So we have two bonds between the CH's and we have one bond between the oxygen. So here's our covalent sigma bond, covalent sigma bond, and covalent sigma bond. So, so far we have used up six valence electrons. We have six more valence electrons that we can use. Notice that carbon and oxygen both can develop double bonds. So let's create a double bond between carbon and oxygen. So we place two electrons and we create a pi bond. So now we have four more valence electrons we can place and we place them around the oxygen like so. Now because oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, carbon has one, two, three, four, and H has one each, this is a neutral Lewis structure, Lewis form. Now, the following prob a problem arises. Now, this is not the only Lewis structure that exists. Others exist. And in fact, here is one other one. Instead of creating that pi bond by placing those two valence electrons into our pi bond here, we could have simply placed those two electrons on oxygen. And that would have created another Lewis dot structure. However, this structure has a negative charge on oxygen and a plus charge on the carbon because we only have one, two, three bonds here and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons on the oxygen. So, notice the following. We have two different Lewis structures for formaldehyde. And in fact, this idea, this concept is called resonance. And these structures, Lewis dot structures, are called resonant forms. So let's define resonant forms. Resonant forms are the different combination of the possible Lewis dot structures for our compounds. Now, whenever we draw resonant forms, the following two things have to always be kept in mind. The first one is since Lewis structures are electronic configurations, we only move electrons and we never move any atoms. Now notice what this arrow represents. This arrow is known as arrow formulism. A double-headed arrow simply means two electrons are being moved. So in this case, I have two electrons moving from my pi bond and they move on to one of the orbitals for the, on the oxygen. And now I no longer have this because these electrons have moved here. Uh, so, this is once again, this arrow signifies movement of electrons and not movement of atoms. In other words, if I draw this molecule or this compound where I took this atom and placed the atom onto one of the orbitals here, so now there's a bond, a sigma bond between oxygen and carbon, this is not a resonant form. This is not a Lewis dot structure for formaldehyde. In fact, this is not even formaldehyde. It's another molecule, it's another compound altogether. So, once again, in resonant forms, there's only movement of electrons, never movement of atoms. Notice another important point that we'll talk about in detail in just a moment. 
there is a double headed arrow like so and this represents resonant forms okay and we'll see why this is different than equilibrium arrows in just a second let's look at nitromethane we're going to do a second example in which we're going to draw the resonant forms so nitromethane has one N, two O's, one C, and three H's. So in order to draw our Lewis Stout structures, let's count the valence electrons. So we have three valence electrons from H. We have four valence electrons from our carbon. So we have N, that's, that means we have five valence electrons coming from N. And we have two O's, that means we have 12 electrons, valence electrons coming from oxygen. So all together we should have a total of 24 valence electrons. Right? 12 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 should give us 12. So let's begin. We draw our carbon, our H atoms, three H atoms around carbon, then we draw our N right next to our carbon, and then two O's, like so. So we start by creating uh, sigma bonds or covalent bonds one bond here, a bond here, a bond here between the H's, a fourth bond between the carbon and N, so all the orbitals here are filled. Now we create a bond between, sigma bond between O and this O here. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, valence electrons left over. So we create this pi bond here, we place two electrons onto our oxygen like we did here, and three pairs of electrons here. So that means this guy has a negative charge, like this one has here. This N has a positive charge, because N likes to have five electrons, it only has four electrons here. And this has six, so it's neutral. So a plus charge and a minus charge creates a net charge of zero. And this does have a net charge of zero. Now, this isn't the only Lewis dot structure. If we move two electrons here and we take these two electrons and create a double bond here, we have the following a different Lewis structure. Basically, these guys flipped. Now we have a negative charge here, we still have a positive charge here, and we have a neutral charge here. So once again, we have a combination of Lewis structures. And this, these guys are known as resonant forms, and the entire concept is known as resonance. Now notice, other structures exist. We could have simply taken this uh, double bond, placed it here, and created a plus two charge, a minus two charge, and a minus two charge. So more Lewis structures do exist. And now we come to the most important point about resonant forms. Nitromethane, this compound, does not spend half of its time as one resonant form and half of its time as the other. It is a combination of the two. In other words, this arrow does not mean it's at equilibrium. In other words, our nitromethane doesn't spend half the time as this compound and then it converts to this compound. The entire nitromethane is a combination of these two molecules. Its actual structure is somewhere in the middle of these two resonant forms. And let's look at the following important observation. So let's suppose we have some compound X and it occur and it reacts in some way and it converts to a completely different molecule, different compound, where the atoms have moved. And this is why. Now let's wait until equilibrium has been achieved, so the arrows, the rates going forward and reverse are the same. Now notice that these two arrows are different than this arrow. Now let's suppose we have some compound A and B, which are resonant forms. Now, this once again does not mean that A converts to B and then B converts to A, right? What this means is that the actual form of this molecule is a combination of the two. It's somewhere in between. Our actual molecule that this resonant forms represents isn't A nor is it B. It's somewhere in between and let's call it C.
Okay, so this is equivalent to some molecule C, which is a combination of these two molecules. And this arrow does not mean equilibrium. Our molecules here aren't at equilibrium. They're not converting from this form to that form and from that form to this form. And the same thing here. What's actually happening is the actual molecules are somewhere in between of these two structures. And that's what resonant forms are.